This, uh, this is the Xeriscape Demonstration Garden at Farmington, uh, the Farmington Ag Science Center with New Mexico State University. And the garden is somewhat unique uh, from other Xeriscape gardens in that it's split into four different sections and then each section is irrigated uh, differently. Okay, we're in the low irrigation zone now and there's a few more plants that I'd like to point out and one of them is the uh, Salvia gregii, the cherry sage. This is a pretty popular plant in uh, Farmington landscapes at least. Uh, and it has beautiful red flowers, dark green color, uh, that very attractive plant for our landscapes here. Uh, one, another one, uh, it's not labeled here, but this is the Abuelita penstem, and it's actually a cross between, I think, penstem and cardinalis and, um, and another one, but it's kind of a, uh, a cross between two different penstemons, and it's called Abuelita, and it does very well here and uh, very well without any irrigation. The, the abuelita, I only, I only know of uh, two nurseries that carry it in, uh, one of them's in Albuquerque, I can't, unfortunately can't remember the name of it, but the other one I think Santa Ana Native Plants Nursery in Bernalillo has, has the uh, abuelita. And they'll have most, as a matter of fact, most of these plants we have in the garden actually came from Santa Ana Nursery in, uh, in Bernalillo. Uh, another, another pen stem that I wanted to point out is the Rocky Mountain pen stem, and this puts on beautiful dark purple flowers in uh, earlier in the spring as you can see the flowers are all gone it's now producing seeds uh, but once again a ver another very popular plant in our area it tracks big uh, those huge bumblebees uh, this plant they seem to prefer this plant for some reason or other but uh, it's usually not an issue and one other plant that i didn't mention that i definitely want to point out because it does so well here is the um, autumn joy uh, sedum Hilo telephium telephium in it. Unfortunately, it's not flowering yet, but uh, when it does, it's a very beautiful plant. It's a succulent, and it does very well. In, in matter of fact, in all our irrigation zones, I think it's still surviving even in a no irrigation zone uh, without water for, without supplemental water for five years. And uh, by the way, our average annual precipitation over the last five years has been about seven and a half inches per year so that's just slightly above uh, what you would uh, classify that a desert gets which is seven inches so uh, so if these plants can survive uh, up here under no irrigation uh, they're uh, they're pretty tough <laughs> I like plants that change their characteristics during the year uh, and this is one of them it'll it'll be uh, just a green succulent for a while and then later on white flowers a whitish yellow flower and then those those will turn dark red towards the towards the later part of the season in the fall so I like plants that change are dynamic and change throughout the season rather than just something that's you get flowers early in the spring they fall off and then all you, you just have a green plant okay if you want to move to another section um, where the plants get a little more water and may look have a little better quality this section over here is our medium irrigation section. This section had been getting about eight gallons of water per week per plant uh, throughout the uh, growing season. Most plants do quite well at this irrigation level. Like I said, this year has been exceedingly dry, so they may not be, be doing quite as well as they have in past years. But one that's very drought tolerant and uh, is doing very well in the no irrigation zone, although I forgot to point it out, is the chocolate flower. Uh, very nice plant. It flowers early in the morning. Gives these nice yellow uh, daisy type flowers. And then uh, these flowers only live for one day. They'll die uh, by the end of the day and then all will be left is these little, uh, these little buttons here. But the next day a whole new flush of flowers will come out. But the flowers themselves only live one day. Uh, the red yucca over here is a uh, one of a favorite plants, it seems like up here in the Farmington area, you see a lot of them in landscapes around businesses and in the median strips along uh, Main Street down in Farmington. And it does quite well without irrigation or with very limited amounts of irrigation. And uh, it's a very beautiful plant, attracts hummingbirds. It's a good plant for the, for the landscape here in northern New Mexico. The bush pen stem in here is a, another native plant to New Mexico. Um, you see these growing usually along the roadsides or something like that, and it'll be completely filled with these little pink or white flowers, usually throughout the summer time. But you can see this one is starting to lose flowers already. Uh, I think the heat in the, this year and the dryness has really um, 
taken a toll on some of the plants and they've been dropping their flowers here in the garden this year. The sacatone, giant sacatone grass here, uh, another uh, native of New Mexico. Uh, you see it mainly growing down around maybe the Cuba area, San Isidro, and then, and then of course uh, other places in southern New Mexico. But it's doing very well up here. And this is a plant that uh, has been uh, uh, thought about maybe using it as a bio uh, biofuel because it produces so much biomass on very limited amounts of water that it might be a, a plant that would be suitable for uh, for biomass and and possibly for burning as a as a biofuel plant. It's a nice plant, makes a good border. Some I've heard of some chili growers using it as windbreaks to prevent damage to their chili crop. Uh, but it is pretty aggressive. It can start self-seed itself, and, and these plants are very difficult to, uh, to remove. They have to be practically dug out with a shovel. They're a little bit hard to pull these plants because they have such a strong root system. Apache plume, here's another native to New Mexico and Texas, and uh, pretty common in, uh, for landscape uses uh, in the Albuquerque area and then uh, you find them in native uh, sections up here in uh, northern New Mexico, uh, native areas. Another plant native to New Mexico is the desert zinnia here. Nice yellow flowers, pretty dense, and it spreads around somewhat, and uh, it makes a pretty ground cover or low-growing uh, plant with, uh, with nice flowers on it. This is your, um, this is a Rocky Mountain juniper, and it's a little bit more native to, to Colorado, southern Colorado, than, uh, than maybe northern New Mexico, except in higher elevations. But it does very well under, under limited irrigation, and uh, it's one of the uh, other evergreens that I'd, I'd highly recommend for, uh, for a xeriscape.